Hi everyone, Stepan here. Today I'm going to start covering games from Limone Piemonte Open, uh, which I played at the end of January, so about two weeks ago the tournament finished. Uh, let me give you a brief context about the tournament. So uh, Limone is a seven round tournament uh, played in four days, so there are three double rounds which I don't like, I prefer playing one round per day. Also, uh, round one uh, was played at 7.30 p.m. on the first day, which is like midnight for me. I go to sleep very early and wake up very early, but by, by 7 o'clock I'm already like, very tired and usually don't do anything chess-related, unless I still have a game going on during the tournament but basically it's it's too late for me so i had to rest during the day to make sure that i wasn't tired for the game uh, in round one i faced the strongest player in the tournament uh, a finnish international master samalgo tapani rated over 2400 they played on board one there weren't too many players uh, at the tournament maybe 30 or so and the covid situation was really tough like you had to wear an uh, FFTP, whatever the name is, mask, the the the, the better one uh, during the whole game and it, it was tough. I, I'm not used to playing with that mask one. I'm used to playing with the normal blue ones. Okay, and Limone is a beautiful town if you've never been there. It's uh, close to the French border, close to Nice. Uh, the, the nearest large town I would say is Torino. Uh, so I went to Torino and then took a train to Limone, but it's, it's beautiful, it's a ski resort and uh, with nice wooden houses and the weather was perfect, it was sunny, it was warm, uh, I'd expected it to be very cold up in the mountains, but it was really warm. Okay, so, so round one against an international master, he starts pawn to d4 uh, and I had basically no time to prepare because I didn't know who I was going to play but I'd looked at some of his games in advance because there weren't too many players playing the tournament so I pre prepared for a few okay so d5 c4 c6 knight f3 knight f6 knight c3 e6 we have the semislav and he plays e3 after knight bd7 he goes for the meran with bishop to d3 if you're unfamiliar with this this is like one of my favorite openings and you can find the theory in the Semislav playlist. Okay, so dc4, bishop c4, b5, this is all very normal. Here white has three moves, bishop d3 is the main move, uh, bishop e2 or bishop b3 can also be played. All three are extremely different and require a lot of knowledge. He played bishop d3 which is the main move. Now there are two ways for black to play, either bishop b7 or a6, I played a6. And now there's only one way for white to, to prove uh, an opening advantage, and that's to play e4 straight away. In most of my games previously, my opponents would make uh, the mistake of castling, which is, is really not good after castles. Black gets in c5 and can easily develop with bishop to b7, while at the same time white has no counterplay in the center. So the correct way to play is pawn to e4. And the only way for black to continue is to play c5, breaking the center, activating his bishops uh, and preparing bishop to b7. Now, here white can choose between two uh, main moves, e5 or d5. Uh, e5 is, I would say, more complicated. My opponent chose d5, which is the Reynolds attack. And this is basically where the theory begins. Uh, there are three moves for black, uh, c4, queen c7 or bishop b7. e5 can also be played, but I'm not too familiar with e5 and I've never played it. I, I've played the three other moves. c4 is the main move, I played c4, getting a tempo on the bishop. Now here, uh, the, the main way for white to continue is to take on e6, f6, then bishop to c2, queen to c7, you want to be controlling e5, and after castles, bishop to b7. Now white can continue knight d4, uh, knight g5 or queen e2. Uh, I, I'm familiar with all three and again I don't want to get into too much theory. But after c4 my opponent played the second most common move, bishop to c2. And this kind of surprised me because there are some independent lines which black could go for, uh, which uh, I started remembering and calculating at this point 
uh, I haven't looked at them in a long time. Uh, obviously, I have a chance to, to, to transpose back to the main line. I can just play queen to c7. And if d6, I go f6, and we have the same thing. Now, it's just the, the, the same position, castles, bishop b7, and so on. Uh, also, after queen to c7, if my opponent doesn't take but castles instead, then bishop to b7, and again, uh, the best way for white to continue is d6, f6, and now again, knight d4, or knight g5, or queen e2. But after bishop to c2, uh, I remember... I remembered looking at two independent lines. Uh, one of them is pawn to e5 in this position, uh, which is fairly similar to e5 in the other one, so I didn't really go, want to go for that. But I remembered looking at knight c5 and uh, thinking that it's very interesting. So the idea behind knight c5 is, of course, if, if takes, then you can also take with the knight. And if takes, you can trade the queens off. So I should probably castle. Uh, it's it's interesting because it deviates from the mainline theory and shouldn't be too bad. Uh, it doesn't allow the same attacking ideas that, that white normally gets after those crazy lines with knight g5 or knight to d4. Uh, I remember uh, learning bishop to g5 in this position and uh, queen to c7, d6, bishop e6, bishop f6, uh, gf6 and this was okay for, for black, in my mind, at least as far as I could remember. You have the bishop pair, you have a 3-2 to pawn majority on the queen side. Uh, should we trade queens, black should have a better endgame despite double def pawns. Uh, another line after knight to c5 is simply castles, which I think should be slightly better for white than bishop g5. And again, queen to c7, uh, and now b4 was the problematic move in my mind which I have to take, and a, b, and after bishop to b7, uh, white plays b4 again, and I need to retreat, so knight cd7, and takes, and takes. And still, uh, when I looked at this position, visualized this position during the game, I thought, okay, this is okay, uh, slightly better than, than uh, what happens in the main lines, because b4 is hanging, and I can still defend uh, my e6 pawn uh, in several ways. Okay, but my opponent surprised me, he played knight to d4, which is a move I don't know. It's a move that has never been played. I should mention that I spent about 20 minutes on knight c5. Uh, that's probably an impractical decision, because I could have just gone for the main lines, which I knew better, and I would have played instantly. But it sort of paid off, because he played knight d4, which isn't really a good move. Uh, it puts pressure on e6, but it also... Uh, allows black to develop freely. Uh, so I, I played bishop to b7. Uh, I can also take on d5 here, which I'd considered. Uh, so after after taking, probably his only move is z5, and now knight f4. And if knight e4, black should be much better, uh, because d4. And if castles, just bishop to b7. There should be enough compensation for the pawn, and uh, eventually white would get it back, but this seems okay. But I ended up playing bishop to b7, which is also fine. Uh, he castled, and now I played bishop to e7. This is probably a mistake. Uh, probably queen c7 is better, and after something like queen e2, just rook to d8, uh, and bishop to g5, bishop to e7 now, just completing my development. Obviously, the f5 square is weak, so in the event of de, I probably should take fe. Uh, in these lines. Okay, but bishop e7 is still okay. Uh, he played rook e1, I played queen c7, which is fine. And now finally d6. And when I analyzed this game uh, afterwards, I was really unhappy with my decision here. And not that uh, white is much better after, I, after what I did. The position is equal. But had I recaptured correctly, I would have had an advantage. So the correct way to take is, is f6, keeping control over the f5 square. If e5, I can just castle queenside. And I saw this, but I wasn't really sure, so I became really scared about e5 and castles queenside. If e f6, bishop f6. Bishop e3 defends the knight. I thought I could just take, 
and after bishop takes just go rook d8 which is correct i can and this should be perfectly fine for me in fact black should be slightly better but i, I was too afraid to do it during the game so that's why i didn't play fe6 if there was no e5 uh, i would have played it straight away so i took with the knight uh, allowing knight f5 I should mention that knight e6 in this position uh, is just better for black, I think. The engine says it's equal, but having gotten rid of this knight, uh, the position is kind of pleasant for me. If e5 now, I can just go rook d8, and after something like bishop to d2, I can go knight d5. And after queen h5, I can just go king to d7. My king should be fairly safe on, some, on b8. I have the f-file, uh, the e5 pawn is weak, have a 3 to 2 pawn majority, the bishop is loose, so uh, both sides have to be careful, but should be okay for me. So after knight e6, my opponent played knight f5, which is what I expected. Okay, rook to d8, queen to f3, and castles. And here my opponent played an extremely tricky move, which I didn't see. He played queen to g3. Now, it was tricky for me. If you are a normal person, it's not tricky at all. You have a move that gives black a great position without any issues at all. I made a mistake here, which I can explain in a second. But trying to understand why I was unable to see what I didn't see is just, I, I cannot do it. So, okay, here are the problems. My queen is attacked. So if I take on g3, my loose bishop falls first with check. So queen g3 is out of the question. So I either have to move the queen or I have to move the bishop. And my reasoning was I cannot move the bishop because my queen is not defended, which is just absurd. I just didn't see that my knight on e6 was defending my queen. And moving the bishop wasn't even a consideration for me. That's insane. Uh, trying to explain it, I can say that I'm not used to having a knight on e6. It's kind of a weird square for the knight, so maybe that's it. If the queen was on d7, I would always be aware that my knight on f6 is defending it. In any case, I just didn't see queen g3, and then once he played it, I didn't see that I can play bishop c5. I just thought queen takes queen, wins the queen. Obviously, he, he should exchange queens now. Uh, so, if something like this happens, I, I don't see why black would have any problems in this position. Uh, black should be slightly better in any endgame. So, I would have traded pieces off and tries, tried to force through my, my queenside pawn majority. If after bishop c5 he declines the trade with something like queen h4, then probably just knight to d4. And if knight g7, that's no problem. I just take on c2. Queen g5, I have king h8. Or h6, I should be winning this position. Uh, yeah, okay, th that was hard to explain. So after queen g3, I played what I thought was the only move, queen to d7. And now I'm just losing. Uh, the, the game is over. The engine gives this as plus 6 for white. I thought I was worse, uh, I thought I was much worse, but I didn't think it was that bad. Now here's the problem, bishop h6. Okay, knight h5, there is no repetition because he can always play queen f3. So we repeated once, and now he played queen f3 and I have to resign, and what do I do? I cannot save my knight, if I play knight f6, he plays rook d1 and knight d5. Uh, I played knight f6, he played rook d1, I played queen e8, I need to defend my bishop, and now knight d5, and that, that's it. That's just it. There is no salvation here. Uh, I took on h6, and he took on e7, and I resigned. Uh, obviously, that's just mate next move. So I, I got destroyed. I got destroyed. Uh, instead of playing bishop c5, which is equal or end slightly more pleasant for black i just played queen d7 and 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 lost it's still hard to explain why i didn't see that my queen was defended but i didn't and that's why i lost so yeah tough round one i just got smashed and uh, obviously i was unhappy about this game but the positive thing is 
that after the game uh, and during the break between two tournaments I had, I studied uh, bishop c2 extensively and now I prepared the line against this, which I wish someone played it now against me. So yeah, you have to sort of work on your repertoire as you go along. It's impossible to know everything. But yeah, knight c5, not a good move. Good after knight d4, but he could have punished me. So yeah, this was round one. I'll show you round two tomorrow. Uh, again, sorry about the poor quality of this game. Uh, I was astonished after... I remember walking to my room after I lost the game and thinking, wait, why couldn't I just move the bishop to c5? And then in my mind, I answered the question, well, because your queen is hanging. And then I said, but I have a knight on e6, so my queen is not hanging. So what happens if I move the bishop? And then just... In my head, I saw the correct move and then started analyzing in my room and just got really upset. Okay, uh, thank you very much for watching. See you tomorrow uh, with round two. Stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.